Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make Invader Zim's house from the show Invader Zim. If you are new to the channel, please do consider subscribing and clicking the little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my stuff sent directly to your sub box. But without any further ado, let's get started. So just before we get started everybody, here are all of the materials that we will need to make Invader Zim's house. Please do make sure that you have access to all these materials and enough of them as well. The amount of space required to make the house is a 19 by 23 block area, as you can see represented by the white concrete grid on the ground, which you are more than welcome to make if you do feel as though it will help you out. And that's it. Pause the video if you have to, gather all that stuff, make sure you've got enough room to make it, make sure you're ready, and once you are, we can Biggie. Step one, ladies and gentlemen, come all the way over to the front left hand corner of your grid, if you've made it, and count to the right from this corner, one, two, three, four, and then inwards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're going to start off the build by placing ten cyan concrete on top of each other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're then going to place a light blue terracotta on top, to the right, and then two cyan on top of that, one, two. We then want to place one to the right, two on top, one to the right, two on top. Grab the light blue terracotta again and place one to the right, two on top. Place a cyan concrete to the right and place two light blue terracotta on top one two now i realize that this is a bizarre shape ladies and gentlemen but this will all make sense a little bit later on we are now going to take that cyan concrete that we last placed and we're going to extend it to the right by one and down by two one two right by one down two right one down two right by one down by one Place a light blue terracotta underneath, extend to the right one. Also, you can extend that light blue terracotta inwards one as well, and you can do the same with the opposite side. It will give you an effect that should look exactly like this. In addition to that, you can connect both of those sides together using some magenta glass. And on top of the second glass coming in, or the first glass coming inwards on the left, so like we're on the left here, come in by one, and then you can place a light blue terracotta on top of it, up two, right one, and then up two, and then right by one. Actually, no, we'll go, we'll go up an additional one, my bad. So it will look a little something like that, ladies and gentlemen. And what we can then do is we can extend this right hand side of the house downwards here So this is the light blue terracotta. We want to join it down to the ground using some cyan concrete such as this And then we're going to take the block that hit the ground the cyan concrete and we're going to extend it to the left by three one two three stick a light blue terracotta on the end and then a blue terracotta light blue and then place three more cyan concrete Extend the blue and light blue terracottas upwards each by two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Extend the light blue terracottas up one more. Place yellow stained glass in between. Place a birch button, bottom left diagonally of the yellow glass. I want you to place two rows, one, two rows of cyan terracotta on to or cyan concrete rather on top of the door we're then going to place a birch stair just like this in front of the middle of the second row of cyan concrete we're going to extend the window that we placed above we're going to extend it down by three rows one two three just like this we have two more windows to make, that's dead easy to do. Using our magenta stained glass, we are going to, in the bottom left corner and bottom right, place two magenta glass extending inwards, and then two rows on top of each, like this. Very good. That's looking great. 
and then all we have to do is just fill the middle of this in and by the middle of this in I mean like the entire front of the house in using some cyan concrete and that will majoritively be a lot of the detail on the house now there is a little bit more because there's like a rather large uh, it's kind of like a satellite dish uh, there's a rather large satellite ish looking dish ish on top of the house on the right hand side but we can't quite add that yet because we have to do the roof so that's what the front of the house looks like so far we want to extend the sides of the house backwards and the way that we're going to do that is we are going to literally extend like all of the sides the long sides backwards by I believe it's going to be 10 rows so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and that that's exactly what we're going to do so we're going to use cyan concrete we'll extend the long sides backwards we won't extend the roof I don't think that would probably be a bit of a waste of time really we're not going to extend all of the roof uh, it would make it easier to place the roof honestly to do that but it would increase the amount of time that we uh, we spend building it so um, it's not really worth it in the end and we will also have to do the back of the house by the way of which I have absolutely no no idea what is on the back of the house despite the fact that I searched quite rigorously so on the back of the house I think what we are going to do is we are going to mirror the light blue terracotta portions um, of the front so that's that's exactly what we'll do and that means all we'll have to do here is you see that um, like light blue terracotta on the front um, we're going to take the top two corners off here we're going to join them together we're going to place light blue terracotta as, as if it would be on the front and we're just going to mirror the sort of like lightning bolts sort of shape that we have on the front that's what the detail is going to be on the back because again I couldn't find any detail but I do want to put something back there and I don't think that it's uh, too much of uh, too much of a guess to have something like that. Um, the entire lower portion can be sealed up using cyan concrete. I realised that we jumped the gun a little bit with the top of the bubble, but that's okay. Um, what we're essentially going to be doing, ladies and gentlemen, you wonder why I, I I just randomly made that row. The reason that I made that row is because we are actually going to be copying. Now that we've kind of like filled the back in with cyan concrete, we want to copy the roof structure on the back of the house directly onto the front, uh, or, or from the front of the house onto the back of the house is the proper way to say that. So um, quite easily done, literally just copy directly what you have in front of you and you should be all right, I think. Um, it does get a little bit confusing towards the top, but ju just do make sure that it matches up with the front like that. I even got a little bit confused looking at it just then, but um, if you do that, if you do just make sure it matches up, you should be completely fine. Uh, we're now going to do the actual roof, which is made out of blue terracotta. The blue terracotta is going to begin, we'll start on the front, just as is customary in the koala tradition. Uh, we're going to place blue terracotta hanging off the right side of the front of the house. And the blue terracotta is going to hang one block down like this. And the blue terracotta, essentially as it goes, is going to go all the way around the edge of the roof. It's going to climb around it like this. And uh, it's eventually going to reach the top. And there's going to be a big two block point at the top of the roof. So before we get out of hands, it basically just looks like this. You can see that the roof is basically just kind of crawling around the outside edge of the uh, boundary of the roof that we kind of already established. So hopefully it should be fairly simple uh, to see what you have to do. Hopefully. So I actually think that that looks pretty good. And all, all we would have to do is extend that one row forwards. Uh, hanging over the front of the build and that's it pretty much um, Once the front's done you guys might be able to use your imagination to see uh, what you will have to do for the back um, The same thing so uh, it's actually easier than the back because we can and I'll show you in a second So that's what we want to have that is that's the the front of the roof um, The back of the roof is dead easy because we literally just extend all of these blocks and we extend them backwards So the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm actually going to make the back portion of the roof I'm gonna make it overhang and then I'm just gonna fill all of the blocks in the middle uh, and that's all I'm gonna do so uh, that's the way that I would do it I'd make both sides kind of like I'm doing 
doing now. I'd prefer not to build down if I can avoid it, but uh, I guess I've kind of uh, got myself into this groove now. And um, here we go. And then now that we have like both sides, you can see it all joins together nicely. Um, we can just concentrate on filling this in. And the cool part about doing it, whoops, uh, about doing it this way is you can actually skip out on joining some of the blocks together. So uh, particularly the inside corner blocks like these ones, um, you don't have to extend those. Those are just aesthetic, of course. Any blocks that you wouldn't be able to see anyway, you don't have to bother extending because it would just be a waste of time really and if you're on survival which uh, I wouldn't recommend <laughs> <laughs> just because just because I'm bad at survival but uh, if you're building this on survival can't be the easiest thing to build on survival because of all the terracotta and concrete and stuff um, then you're going to want to conserve materials anyway so uh, we're just going to extend all of these and all of these and it's going to look pretty good once, uh, once the roof is finished, it, uh, it'll have a decent amount of detail. The only thing that we're missing off the house, um, as I mentioned earlier, I guess we've kind of hit this point rather quickly, is we are missing the giant satellite dish. But that is a very, very easy fix. We can definitely easily add that. So um, it's, actually, it's actually probably one of the harder things to make um, in regards to this house. It's a little bit tricky. And the positioning is, uh, there's going to be a little bit of uh, thought in regards to the positioning but we'll be able to do it no problem but it's kind of like a weird it's a cool part of the house honestly so that is what we want to have so far ladies and gentlemen this is uh, this is the house it is missing that very cool satellite dish so basically there is a satellite dish specifically on the middle ish right hand side of the house now you don't have to like place this precisely it's not a big deal so i i haven't even 100 figured out where i placed it on the original but as long as we place it pretty much in the middle of the roof so this particular layer of the roof how do i know it's the middle it's got three layers below it and it's got three layers above it so this is therefore the middle of the roof now if you want to find the middle of the middle of the roof the middle of the middle of the roof will have five, I believe, or six. I think that this is the middle. I'm just going to mark it out. We'll have one, two, three, four, five, six blocks on the left of it and six blocks on the right of it. So it's the one with three below, three above, six on the left, six on the right. And then you found the middle of the roof and then that's perfect. Um, if you want to be precise, if not, just kind of eyeball it. Well, from this particular block, the middle of the middle of the roof, we want to place three... That'll be one, two, three, light grey concrete extending up. We then want to extend the light grey concrete right, up, right, up, right, up by three. So that's going to be one, two, three. We then want to extend left, up, left, up. Let's make sure that that's... That, oh, okay, that's perfect. Left, up, left, up. We're then going to extend left but now we're going to place gray concrete all the way around that sticky out light gray concrete like this and we're going to add another layer of light gray going all the way around this just to amplify the shape that we had it will basically turn it into a bit of a circular shape kind of like that right that's looking pretty decent and it'll look like it's all joined together using the light gray concrete and all we have to do from this point is we have to grab our light gray concrete and we want to place light gray concrete around the outside of the gray concrete shape that we have just made so it's a, it is a dish so circular and um, it is it is basically we've just added a few layers just to make it look a tad bit more realistic and that's like a dead easy way to make it so that looks pretty good i think um we've got most of the skeleton of this complete we have to make the pointy bit so we take this light gray concrete in the middle we extend it outwards say like one two three and then we stick a gray concrete on the end so that's kind of like the part that the picks up stuff or something I, I don't even know but that's that's part of the dish uh, this middle part of the dish here, so kind of like this long row of light grey, this is relevant. And the way that's relevant is we're going to take the top of the this long row and we're going to extend it to the right by two. One, two. Down, two. And back. Grey concrete in the middle. Grey concrete extending forwards and backwards. Light grey concrete extending around all of that grey concrete. This will make a hinge or 
some sort of joint in the dish. I don't know exactly what you would call it, but it's, it makes it so that you can easily like place and mess around with the dish. So that's that's that particular point. And further down below where the actual dish starts, we're going to take this long row of three that we started off with. We're going to extend it forwards. We're going to extend it backwards. And then we're going to join it back to the roof. So we just want to have something which should look like that. That's not looking too bad. That is essentially, in essence, the house. So now that we have done that, we can get to work on some of the finer details of the house. So we're going to chuck some of this stuff away. We'll pr we might even need some of it again and we're going to grab some smooth stone slabs some oak wood some spruce oak fence pink concrete block of iron blue concrete red concrete white terracotta and we're going to start off by placing a row of smooth stone in front of the entrance of the house we're going to take the bottom and extend it outwards a row so we kind of have like a nice gradual step up and then we're going to destroy a three block wide row row wide block path leading from the outer part, so where the street would be, to the actual house. Um, we're just going to use some smooth stone slabs for that. So so we don't really have to double up on materials, we can just use the slabs. It's not really a big deal, is it? There we go, that's looking good. Um, all the way along the outer part of the boundary, you can place... I, I haven't decided which I like better. I might just use the oakwood planks, but originally I have kind of like an amalgamation of... Uh, oak wood and spruce wood because the actual fence itself is kind of like split it's kind of like it's two different colored boards it almost looks like for the original so you can do that or i, I think I'm, go I'm gonna see how it looks with just oak and this is gonna get placed on all of the rest of the white concrete of the boundary pretty much so it's up to you you can alternate um i, I really prefer i think i prefer this because it doesn't look as messy like um, whilst the other is more accurate, I actually f this looks cleaner and smoother, so, you know, it's up to you, really. So, there's a couple more details as well. There are garden gnomes in the front garden. Lovely. Uh, we're going to take the front right-hand corner of the grass area here, and we're going to extend left by one and two, and then inwards one. We're going to mark it out with a blue concrete and leave a gap of three extending back, placing another blue concrete. We're going to do the same on the opposite side. On the opposite side, we take the corner, we extend inwards two, and then inwards by one, blue concrete, gap of three, blue concrete. Nice and easy. Uh, we're going to place white terracotta on top of the blue concrete, followed by red concrete. So we kind of have the body of the gnomes, the head of the gnomes, and the hat of the gnomes. In addition to this, there are two details. Number one, there is some sort of flank on the middle left hand. So between these two gnomes here, like the middle block, you want to follow that towards the fence and we want to play, say, like one, two, three. Might even make it four, shall we make it four? No, three rows of oak fence, block of iron on top, right two, add another row. There's literally, it's just like a white flag. Um, I don't know why. I guess somebody's surrendering? I don't, I don't even know. Um, what else are we going to do? Well, there are two um, big pig thingies um, that we have to make in the front garden. So they're actually quite... Uh, they're actually quite close to the house itself, so we'll start on the left side here, the bottom left-hand corner, and we'll move right by... What shall we do? Shall we do what? We'll move right by one, and then we'll move forwards one, to work fence on top of each other, left... And then up two, one, two, le whoops, left, why is oak so hard to place? And then we want to place pink concrete on top, left, and then add another layer. So kind of like that, that looks good because it doesn't uh, obstruct the actual view of the house. And we want the same on the opposite side, so we can follow this block along, make sure that we're one block inwards, and we can place the exact same thing on the opposite side. So just two fence on top of each other, up two, right one, up one, I do believe. No, okay. Right one. And then we place the pink concrete on top. Right, and then add another layer. That's not looking too bad, is it? That's that's looking pretty decent. So all we have to do from here, or all we would have to do, is you can replace the actual grass inside. So that would be lime terracotta for me. Levers, we need buttons, loom, or crafting table, white banners, and simply just black dye. Uh, all of the gnomes are going to get eyes. We are giving them the gift of sight. 
They are going to be uh, stone buttons on the sides of the heads. I know they have grey lifeless eyes, but that's okay. And we are going to give them little arms um, in the form of levers or levers, whatever you want to call them. I, I literally just, I swap between the two. I don't even know what the, what you're actually supposed to call them. Maybe it's a re who, who cares? The, the point of the matter is we want to have little gnomes with eyes and, uh, and arms. Uh, the two blotchers of pink concrete are pigs, and they need eyes. So, I'm gonna crack open a loom, literally, crack it open. I'm gonna chuck a white banner in there with some black dye, and we're gonna make the upper half of the banner black, like this. If you grab that and place these banners on the pink concrete, they look like eyes. That's pretty much it. So, kind of like really small little pig faces. If you have never seen this build before, if you don't know Invader Zim's house, you'll be like, what are they? And what are those What are those things that sort of kind of look like gnomes? And why is there a flag there? But if you have watched it, then then you would understand what, what those things are. It's, kind of, it's, it's difficult to uh, make anything of a, like, that's not giant, so. Uh, what I would then do is I would rip up all of this grass and simply replace it with its... Uh, more smooth alternative, the Lime Terracotta. However, that's going to take a little bit of time, ladies and gentlemen. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip up the grass, replace it with Lime Terracotta. I might even add a street, probably not going to add a street, and I might even uh, fill the windows in a little bit. And I'll show you what this build looks like once it's all been completely put together, because we are done. So this is what Invader Zim's house should look like once it has been 100% fully completed, ladies and gentlemen. I have to say, I'm very happy with it. It's a really nice, colourful, detailed, pretty interesting cartoon house. So I would highly recommend making this. If you've made it to this point in the video, it's a little bit redundant to say, but I hope that you're as happy with it as I am. And that's it. I do hope that you guys have enjoyed watching this tutorial. I hope that you've enjoyed making the house. I hope that you've managed it easy enough. If you have, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you're new around here and clicking that little bell next to the subscription button. That will ensure that you get all my stuff sent directly to your sub box. If you want to make any other cartoon houses by me, of which there are many, many different varieties, I don't just make one particular sort of cartoon house. I make all sorts of stuff. Check out the card system, description below, and the top of the comment section for more. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.